it all starts um, from the top. If we don't have a respectable chain of command, uh, there is no way that we will have an effective police service. Police Commissioner Kekla Sitole has been fired. Last week, President Ramaphosa announced that the commissioner will be ending his term of office at the end of March by mutual agreement. What will be the impact of this on the SAP's ability to fight crime? Well, joining me to discuss is Gerwan van Heerden, Deputy Head of Research at the CRA. So, Kerry, could you explain to our audience why are we seeing this leadership crisis at the top of the SAPs? So uh, there has been a leadership crisis in the South African Police Service for more than a decade. This is nothing new. And Sitole is leaving because an inquiry has shown that he showed a lack of leadership during the July unrest in KwaZulu-Natal Gauteng that nearly killed uh, 400 people. But as I've mentioned, Sitole is joining a long list of national commissioners who have not completed their term. So for example, uh, Jackie Selebi, he was jailed for 15 years due to corruption. Uh, following him was our current Minister of Police, uh, Becky Tsele, who followed Selebi as National Police Commissioner. And uh, he got fired because of allegations of corruption. After Tsele, uh, we had Ria Piecha, whose term was uh, criticized because she did not have any experience as a member of police, uh, firstly. And secondly, she presided um, over the police during the Marikana massacre that saw around 30 people, more than 30 people uh, being killed. Then we had Komotso Bachlane, who uh, was an inquiry or a commission found that he was dishonest and he was guilty of misconduct during the purchasing of panoramic uh, cameras. And then, of course, we've had Sitole now, who is on his way out by the end of March. And so there has really been a breakdown in the chain of command in the police. And that explains why our police service has been really ineffective in combating crime, restoring peace and order during the chaotic unrest in Gauteng and Kuzun Natal. And this, this is one of the main reasons why South Africa is still struggling with a very high murder rate and crime rate. Right. So, Kerry, we've seen uh, skills shortages, incapacity, but also instances of corruption. So that's very concerning. How is this impacting crime trends and the ability of the police as a whole to uh, effectively deal with crime in South Africa? So overall, um, crime is down uh, slightly. Uh, we've seen that from the latest crime statistics for the third quarter of 2021, that is October until December of 2021. However, when we zoom into specific crime categories such as violent crime, we once again see an uptick in, for example, murder and attempted murder. In fact, uh, murder is up from the, if we compare the, the third quarter with the second quarter, there has been an increase in murder. If we compare the third quarter of 2021 with the third quarter of 2020, there has been an increase in murder. And we, when we compare the third quarter of 2021 with the third quarter of five years ago, 2017-2018, there has still been an increase in murder. The point I'm trying to make is, is that violent crime has been steadily increasing. And uh, that's very worrisome because like I've said on this channel many times before, uh, when you want to judge how, ju how dangerous a country is, the, the most useful tool to look at is the murder rate because there is relatively consistency in the definition of murder and murder is also one of the most reported crime categories in this country. The third quarter crime statistics for 2021 have also shown that there are nearly 50,000 
uh, serious assaults that have taken place in those three months, nearly 50,000 uh, common assaults that have taken place during that same period, around 5,000 residential burglaries, around 5,000 hijackings, um, and about 11,000 rapes have taken place just in those three months. Also, uh, 60 cash in transit heists have taken place. Abnormal figure for such a short period of time. So um, yes, we're on the one hand, we're sitting with a huge crime problem that, that we all know. And on the other hand, we have an incapable police service. It all starts um, from the top. If we don't have a respectable chain of command, uh, there is no way that we will have an effective police service. And as Corruption Watch and uh, the Institute of Security Studies have identified years ago, it is actually less rigorous to appoint a national commissioner than it is to a, a, appoint a, a normal constable on the, on the ground. All right, so Kerry, the fish rots from the head, as they say. How do we go about resolving this leadership crisis at the SAPS and improving our ability to fight crime more generally? So um, it all starts from the top. So if we want to, to fight corruption in the police service, we need to appoint a national commissioner which has a clean record. Um, we also need to ensure that uh, people with the proper skills and and experience are appointed as national police commissioners. Um, so that would also require removing uh, broad-based BE requirements, which is often used as a vehicle for nepotism and uh, corruption. We also need to fully equip the Independent Police Investigative Directorate or IPID to successfully uh, deal with allegations of uh, corruption and misconduct within the police service. Right now, and for many years, IPID has been under-resourced, underfunded, and lacking the proper skills. And this has really uh, prevented them from uh, dealing with criminality within the police service. Um, so I think if we take those three steps, I think that can go a long way in improving the performance of our police. Thanks, Kerry. Let's hand over to you, our audience. What do you think is causing the leadership crisis in the South African Police Service? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, a quick reminder that we have opened up a members-only section of the CRA channel. For under 100 Rand a month, you can join us for our exclusive client webinars. We will have at least one webinar per month. You can also gain access to the recordings of our recent webinars as well. There's a link in the description below where you can find out more. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.